So when I've heard about Sibelius Mobile for the first time, I got extremely excited. You never know when creativity is going to strike. I'm so used to it, it's part of my DNA. That's really a beauty. It just makes life so much easier when you can jot down those ideas straight away. When I first tried it was mind-blowing. Just the thought of being able to work outside my studio environment is just marvelous. Sibelius for mobile is an extension of our desktop application. You choose where you want to work. The interface, the touch screen, the tablet itself offers a number of opportunities for us. The idea that you would touch the rhythm that you were interested on the keypad, drag up or down in order to place that note on your score, you would drag left or right in order to change the chromatic inflection, and you would let go and that note would just be part of your score from then forward. In designing note input and note editing with the Apple Pencil, we've taken things one step further. In order to change a rhythmic duration, you just tilt the Apple Pencil horizontally. And in order to add a sharp or a flat, you go ahead and you tilt the pencil upwards or downwards to raise or lower that note. It was a, a rich opportunity to completely rethink how people enter notes into music notation software. What is going on in the mind is always faster than what you can get out on the page, whether you're writing it out by hand or whether you're putting it into a computer. But the greatest benefit that we have now is that we have tools like Sibelius where I can at least optimize my workflow so that I can get it out faster than any other way that I would be able to. That means I can orchestrate wherever I am, and I'm a voracious cafe dweller. The fact that I might be working on something at home and then have to duck away and I just take the iPad with me and I can continue working on it. When I go to my recording session, I don't even have to take my laptop. So if I need to do a quick correction, I can do so and reprint. Being able to have that more easily accessible, I think, is going to be a very powerful tool for anyone who's trying to compose. You can once again think at the tip of your pen. We believe that this completely revolutionizes the way that people use music notation software, and we're so excited to see what our customers do with it. Good morning and good afternoon or good evening wherever you are in the world. I'm Drew Parsons. I'm one of the audio solutions specialists here at Avid based in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, thank you so much for joining our presentation. So we've had such an amazing few weeks here at Avid. As many of you are aware, we've just released Sibelius for mobile. It's a brand new iPad app. This is an awesome extension for existing Sibelius for desktop users, educators, or composers on the go. If you haven't yet downloaded the app, please go ahead and download it now. It's a free download from the Apple App Store. Have it in front of you so we can go, you can go through it while we're going through this presentation. So before we kind of get started, just a couple of formalities. If you do have any questions, uh, please ask them in the Q&A down in Zoom. And if you are on one of our social channels like Facebook or YouTube, please use the comment section and one of our fantastic uh, staff will get to your question or hopefully at the end we'll answer your question live. So let's get started. And uh, joining me today is uh, principal designer and developer, Joe Plazak. Joe, how are you going, mate? Hey, what's going on, Drew? Good, mate. You've had a busy couple of months, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. The team's been uh, firing on all cylinders and we're super, super pumped with the response that we've gotten so far. And uh, it's great to see so many people here at the webinar today. So thanks everybody for attending. Yeah. Oh, look, the response I've seen online has just been fantastic. And yeah, you guys all deserve, a, you know, a big round of applause. You know, tell us a little bit more about the, you know, the team, like how's, you know, how's everyone, you know, been working on this and what was the, you know, what, how's the team grown into, you know, building this app together? Yeah, so the, first of all, the Sibelius team has uh, has historically been sort of a small and uh, mighty bunch of developer musicians who uh, are passionate about music, who are passionate about software development, and uh, in this amazing product that's been around for nearly 30 years. Um, but, but recently, Avid has made the investment to start growing this team, to start making this team even more powerful. And so uh, this is just, just the tip of the iceberg, what you're seeing, um, what we released last week. We've been working on that project for about a year, and uh, we've got some really, really cool stuff coming up next. So, uh, so yeah, that, the, the team in general, I think the most important thing to say is that uh, we're, we're a group of musicians, uh, we're a growing group of musicians. And uh, everybody is so, so excited to finally share this project with the world. Yeah, absolutely. 
So, you know, I guess a lot of people really want to know, like, you know, when designing this app, you know, what were the intentions, like, you know, when you were kind of like sketching this out, what were the, you know, important things that you wanted to see in this app when you were kind of working it out as a team? Yeah, so I mean, that's like the conundrum that I think any developer slash designer faces is when you want to start building something new, what's the first thing that you do? And uh, so for us, we took sort of a novel approach and we said, we're just going to start with the score. Everything is about the score. So no user interface whatsoever. Bring the score onto the, onto the screen. Let's figure out a whole bunch of new ways for people to interact as if they were working with a piece of paper right in front of them. And then as we sort of progressed along and uh, hit some limitations in terms of what we could only do on the score, then we said, all right, let's add a button for that, or let's try adding you know, this new gallery in here. So the thing that I, to answer your question, Drew, is like, it was all about the score from day one. And when you look at the app, it's so clear. I mean, what you're looking at here is, is nothing but score. I mean, that's, that's what matters. That's why people use our software. They wanna create beautiful, professional looking scores. And that's what this application is all about. Yeah, and I, you know, I definitely noticed that too. If I'll just flip over to the uh, iPad app as well, hopefully you can see that. You know, it looks like Sibelius straight away for me. You know, I can kind of get in there and I can just see my whole score and just kind of move around. And you know, it, the the UI just looks fantastic. You guys have done a great job there. Hey, thanks, Drew. Yeah, and you know, kind of more on the UI. Like, you know, we're just kind of looking at at the top here. It's you know, it's very very clean. And you know, just to kind of start playing it, I can just. You know, without selecting anything, I can just hit play and hopefully you can hear that. It, you know, sounds great. And I'll just stop the playback there. And that's like a, uh, like a subset of the um you know sibelius sound set that's in sibelius for desktop isn't it this is like a mobile edition that we're we've we've implemented into this haven't isn't it yeah absolutely so the, the size of the download when you download the app from the app store it's uh, 1.2 gig and uh, the bulk of that is taken up by the the sound library and uh, sam butler did an amazing job taking our huge sibelius sounds library and pairing it down to what, what we thought were sort of the essential things to have in a, uh, a mobile device now i think that's like a something that maybe we haven't we haven't expressed enough is that when you're working with this application it really is sort of like you've got an entire orchestra you know in in your device you carry around an orchestra in your hand now and so if you're just getting started with music notation if you're just curious about what's there you know maybe you're not quite sure about the differences between the in instruments just pop them into your score get a feel for how things blend how things mix um, this is like an amazing tool for just discovering the world of music, uh, especially as I said, if you're just getting started. Yeah, like I, you know, I've, I, I think for people that are working in education or something like that, you know, get it, getting a score over to a student so they can actually be, you know, maybe practicing an instrument. Like here at the moment in the the uh, iPad app, I've got this in review mode, so all we can actually do is just play back the score or you know potentially print it out. Um, so it's a very, you know, great tool for people that are wanting to learn an instrument even, let alone even start putting notes on a page, which I think is a great, great, uh, you, know, you know, additive to this score. Um, you know, moving on with the UI, like, you know, let's, let's take this out of review mode. And obviously we've got a couple of functions across the top here. Do you kind of want to elaborate the kind of, you know, on the whole idea of this really clean top of the uh, UI here? Sorry, Drew, I was, I was muted there. The, the focus here is, is on the score and the things that you need, you know? So as, as we were designing and developing and testing this application, the question came up all the time is, what needs to be a one-touch operation? And those are the things that you do a lot. And so that's the way that this interface is optimized. So playback, one-touch operation. Uh, we, we expect composers and, and anyone who's using the app to be using that button a lot. Same thing with the undo button. There's nothing more frustrating than sort of, you know, having the software not do what you want on the first try and then not knowing how to undo it. So undo is, is really prominent there. And then as you move across to the other side of the screen, this is where we've sort of packed 
all the power and all the functionality of Sibelius into just two uh, drop-down menus. So you've got the plus, which we call the create menu. So not back to this, our Sibelius 6 create menu. Uh, this is where you find all your galleries. So you find your clefts, your key signatures, your time signatures, bar lines. And, and the way to use this gallery is to first make a selection in your score and then come to this gallery and whatever you want to go in that selection, you select it from this drop-down. And then, Drew, you just tapped into the, the command search there. So this is the, the new feature that we added in the, the February release of the desktop Sibelius. And at the time, uh, we knew that we, were, we had been working on this project, and we knew there had to be a way to bring in all the functionality of Sibelius in one, one location. And in Desktop Sibelius, we've, we've had this feature forever called the Find in Ribbon tab, which was limited to just the things that are in our, our ribbon interface. And we knew that we had to open that up in order to get things into our mobile app. So uh, sort of on the sly, as we were developing the application at the same time, we added the command search into Desktop Sibelius. But what's cool about this is uh, all you need to do is think about, think about what you want to add to your score. You just sort of type it into the, the command search, and then it pops up. So. Um, it's all there, and uh, in time, in time, uh, there's a lot of really cool things that we'll be able to do in this uh, particular portion of the application. I mean, this is a brand new feature. Again, it's just six months old, and uh, we're just getting started with it. Uh, I'll just finish the sweep since I'm almost there. Uh, then we've got the the more menu. So the more menu is uh, is available whether the score is locked or unlocked, and this has got sort of the core features that you're going to need to get to that maybe don't uh, pertain to editing the score itself. So things that are sort of uh, about the score as opposed to within the score. And so this is where you can log into the application. I wanna say something about logging into the application here though. Uh, a user on Facebook had asked me the other day where they could find the place to sign in. And I thought, oh, wow, you know, so it's at the end of the getting started videos, Drew, that you put together, but it's also here in the more menu. But the cool thing about the application is it's designed to run and you'll, you'll find the login menu if you need it. So there's so much functionality in the free version of this software that, you know, I'd say for new users, just jump in and start using it. Don't worry about logging in, whether you're an existing user or a new user. Uh, when you hit a feature that isn't in your, your tier, uh, the software will, will tell you and it will ask you to sign in. But if, if you really need it, if you want to make sure that your, your login credentials are working, you can find it there in the more menu. Uh, the more menu is also where we've got your awesome videos, Drew. Can you go ahead and pull those up real quick? Yeah, I can. Yeah, if we just go up to the more menu here and we hit getting started, you can That's see right. these so, awesome little how-to videos here. And yep, there's my hand. And uh, we can go through and just kind of gives you like a, a really easy kind of like get through of like, you know, okay, this is how I use the Apple Pencil or if I uh, want to use my keyboard and mouse, which also I think really great um, idea for... Um, the design if you're an existing Sibelius user and you already know all of your shortcuts just adding a keyboard to the iPad app you can just you know get started straight away with all of those keyboards that you're so aware of using so that was a really really good idea hey thanks thanks uh the videos are, are totally dynamite you know i think it's normal for users when they're signing into a new application they're excited to use it they want to see what it looks like they sort of skip out of that you know first tutorial that's presented to them so i think it's important for everybody to know that they can re-access it uh through the more menu but the thing that i want to say in general is when we were introducing this application to our, our beta users we would roughly take an hour to 90 minutes to sort of walk them through every single thing that the program could do but drew's videos condense that down into about two minutes so if you've got two minutes to spare and you can watch those uh those videos you'll be well on your way to to making music in, in the new mobile app yeah and uh for people that want to know where those videos are i'm sure uh, one of our um, friendly staff members can put a link to YouTube potentially in the comments section and uh, people can jump on those and uh, get started straight away. Yeah, so right should on. we start, should we start just kind of looking through the app as it is like while it's in review mode, just kind of, you know, playing the score and how to kind of navigate around the score there. Like, I think the great thing for me is that I've, you know, been using touch screens and iPads for a long time. Now you kind of naturally just, you know, can dive in and kind of know what you're doing. You're using your finger left and right to kind of, move the score, you know, move the score around. If I want to zoom in, obviously I've got that pinch and stretch motion there, but you know, playing the score itself, let's just tap anywhere outside of the score and nothing selected. If we hit play, it's going to play from the start of the score. If we say select an object, so let's select this object here. Um, it will actually then start playing from that part of the score. 
And likewise in Sibelius for desktop, if you, um, you know, just say select, you know, one instrument. So if I just triple tap here, it's only going to play that instrument and everything else is muted. So really, really easy way of kind of playing parts of your score. Yeah, and Drew, there's one more thing I just want to throw out there. So first of all, any, anyone can download this app for free and it can open any Sibelius file of any size for free. So if somebody sends you a giant orchestral score and you, you, you're on the free version, you won't be able to edit that score, but it, your score will look just like it does right now in review mode. So you'll be able to play it, you'll be able to make filtered selections like, uh, like the one that, that Drew just did and play back certain staves of, of that particular score. Now, where this is cool is, is say that you were actually going to play this piece. You know, you were playing in a quartet, uh, sorry, a, a trio with uh, two other musicians and you uh, were going to play the violin part. So if you just wanted to hear your part in isolation, you could do what Drew just did, which is triple tap on the, on the violin and hit play. And then, uh, so this will start back from the beginning, but that's fine. Um, so so that's one way to just hear your part but there's also a way to do the reverse which is very cool for being able to, to rehearse which is i want to hear everything but my part you know so i want to play my part and so you can also make filtered selections that way drew you want to go ahead and uh, select the staves on the score everything but the uh the violin yeah absolutely so if i select whoop if i just press and hold that bar and then i can then press and hold a little bit longer on the piano part it's going to be selecting just those and then I hit play and that should play everything except for the uh, violin at the top of the score. Cool. Very cool. I want to, yeah. I want, to, I want to show you a quick shortcut too for uh, another way that you could do that faster. So if you yeah. just clear your selection, do do a two finger tap on uh, on say that uh, that first bar. Okay, right here, two finger tap. Uh, two finger, two finger double tap. Cool. So oh, two what you've done now, that's perfect. Yeah, you've made a system selection. So the the two finger tap will get you sort of the equivalent of what uh, command uh, clicking will do in desktop Sibelius. Now, now that you've got everything selected, you can still do your long press on the violin, and that will remove that the violin stave from your selection. So that's sort of you know you've got two ways of doing it. I mean, one way is sort of the additive way, like you just did. You long press all the things that you want to hear. But if you know that you just want to remove, say, like you're the soprano and you want to take your part out of out of playback, you can do a, a two finger double tap and then just long press your part and remove it. And so you might save yourself some time that way. Perfect. Hey, let's uh, work smarter, not harder, right? Amen. Yeah, totally. Excellent. All right, it's cool. So we've got kind of got this in review mode. Let's take it out of review, review, review mode and let's kind of see all the extra things we've got. So if I've got this little padlock at the top right of my... So, um, so sorry to interrupt. So sorry, but there's one more thing that I've got to mention. Oh yeah, go for it. We've got some people here. Uh, in general, uh, there's one problem that we found that our users have been having with playback, and I just want to quickly address it right here. So Sibelius, the mobile app, respects your silent mode settings. So if you have your device on silent mode, uh, Sibelius, when you go to hit play, it will seem like playback is not working. But uh, yeah, Drew, you've got it. I think you've got it. Do you have it as a drop down there or no? Do you have it in your... Yeah, your I've, got, oh, it's, it's, I've got the output there, but you're right. Yeah, if you so kind of have you the volume to the, down. I'm going to have you drop back in that bell down at the lower corner. So you go, go back to those, those icons. You've got your bell above your, your Apple TV yep. remote. If that is on, so if you've, got, if you've got silent mode on, playback will not work for you because, again, Sibelius respects that. So if you're finding that playback's not working for you, you can do one of two things. You can go in there and you can turn that setting off, or you can plug in some headphones and it will still work uh, through the headphones. So sorry to, sorry to interrupt your, uh, your flow there, but it's super important, I think, because a lot of people have been caught off guard by the fact that we respect that setting. I think uh, potentially we'll have to do some clarification in the future so that people know that that's the case. Yeah, fantastic. And it's probably actually not a bad feature to have because you could be sitting on a plane or a train and doing some notation work and the person next to you might not be uh, a fan of what you're working on. You might be doing some kind of mariachi music, right? And that, that might not that be their jam. That wouldn't be the case for you, Drew. I mean, everybody would be a fan of what you're doing. Oh, 
Too nice, too nice. Okay, so we're going to take this out of review mode. And now you can see, as you were mentioning before, we've, we've added all these new um, features at the top here. So yes, obviously we've got the, uh, you, know, come up, you know, this new gallery here for adding all of our clefts and, and key signatures, time signatures, bar signatures. You know, I can just tap here and get through all of those very, very quickly. And then obviously the command search that you were talking about brings up the keyboard and I can search for what I want. But we've got this new little, uh, you know, uh, quaver down here in the bottom right. What, what do we got here? That's the new keypad. It's very slick. And we've got a couple of new buttons here. Do you kind of want to elaborate on what's happening here on the keypad? What was the yeah. design thought behind, behind this? So, so touchscreens offer a rich opportunity for us to sort of rethink the way that people put notes into music notation software. So I'm, I'm totally happy to, to drive a demo of this. Drew, you want to go ahead and start with the fresh score? Uh, before we close yeah. the score, though, I did want to do a quick shout out to, to Justin Toki, who engraved this score. It's got some super awesome slurs, uh, such a fun score. And, and Justin, he's, it's great to have him uh, joining our team this year and uh, putting out some awesome music engraving for us. So thanks, Justin, for that. Yeah, and let's take a look at a new score. Yeah, we'll just go back to the uh, very st start window. And obviously, this is what we're going to see when you start a new score. So we're going to go create new score. And just like Sibelius for desktop, we've got all these amazing templates to start with. So let's just maybe do a solo piano. There we go. And uh, just like you know, Sibelius for desktop, we've got this really nice, clean looking score to start with. So yeah, let's get into some, you know, adding some notes on a page. One of the things that I like about iPad is that I've got that split screen function. So what I'm going to do is just bring over iBooks here and I've got some very old handwritten music on the side here. So we can actually start using this um, to kind of enter notes in on the page there. So let me just blow things up a bit so we can kind of see what we're looking at. There we go. So now I've got, you know, a PDF on, on the left hand side and I've got Sibelius on the right hand side. So I can just be, you know, engraving notes over or, you know, working on something that someone's handwritten for me and let's get into it. So here's the keypad. And uh, Joe, how would we get started? What would be the uh, you know, the way into this. I, I know, but you know, let's let's hear it from the man who put it all together. Yeah, sure. I'm happy, happy to help. So so here's the cool thing about the design on the new keypad. So first of all, the keypad is iconically Sibelius. You see the keypad, you know what you're you're working on. At the same time, like we've got a whole generation of composers and users who have never used a keyboard with a keypad. And so uh, it's it's both at the same time sort of like a nod to the past, and then we reimagined how this thing is used, and so it becomes an entirely new uh, element for us. It's a, sort of like a supercharged keypad now that it's got these really intuitive touch gestures on it. So here's here's the cool thing about uh, the keypad and putting notes in. So you're, you're looking at your score over there, and you're thinking, all right, I've got to put in a sixteenth note, and. Uh, Drew, Drew has cleverly hidden the fact that we're working in a soprano clef there, but that first note looks to me like it's a, like it's a C4 middle C. So uh, we're going to put that note into our score. And, and here's the thing. If you know you want to put in a 16th note of middle C, you don't want to have to sort of translate that to some sort of instrument. You don't want to have to think like, ah, all right, I know I need a 16th note, but what I have to think about is where is that note on a piano or where is that note on a guitar? You just want to touch the 16th note and get in your score as fast as possible. So here's yeah. what you do. You just put, uh, first of all, you select in the score where you want it to go. You put your finger yeah. on the 16th note, not a guitar fret, not a piano key. And then you start sliding your finger up or down and the ghost note appears. And so the ghost note yeah. will let you, if you slide up or down, it will let you set your note diatonically within the score. And if you need a sharp or a flat, then you can just sort of also take that gesture, that one touch gesture and move it left or right. And that will add a sharp or a flat to your score. Yeah, so, it's, uh, it's very easy for me to do that. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of enter in a couple of notes really quickly. And you're right, I just kind of just tap on the keypad here. I can just go up and down. And it's just adding that note. And yeah, if I slide my finger a little bit to the right, I've got that sharp. And a little bit to the left, I can add a flat there. And then just keep going and just kind of keep adding notes there. So yeah, this is very, very easy to kind of get notes on the page really, really quickly. So this is great. The, the cool thing about it is that you don't have to translate into some sort of other representation of music. So imagine you're a trumpet player. Like, you don't want to have to think at the keyboard if you think in trumpet. And so what's cool about the keypad is it lets you think in music. You need this thing. You touch it. It goes in your score. You slide up and down, left and right to place it, and you let go, and it's in your score. Uh, this is an awesome way of, of adding melodies in to work melodically. Now, at the same time, 
Uh, it's touchscreen. It's super sensitive. Uh, so sometimes you might mis make mistakes. And so, Drew, let's talk about the, the two new features that are, are there on the keypad. So the first one is this pitch correction tool. Yeah, it's just on the it's just on the right here, just uh, uh, on the next to my flat symbol. I've got this pitch correction tool. So if I press and hold that, I can then move that note around to to the obviously to the right um, pitch that it's meant to be on. And I can obviously add my sharps and flats as well. So if you do make a mistake, like say I put it on the uh, wrong thing here, just tap the note, and then I can just move up and put it in the correct position. And then you know we can then keep working on the uh, on the rest of this uh, on the rest of this piece. Yeah, two things I want to say about this. The first is that, you, as you just showed, the pitch correction tool actually lets you access double flats and double sharps. So if you're just putting notes in and you're using the touch gestures, we limit the accidentals that you can put in when you're when you're putting in actual notes to just a flat or a sharp. And again, it's because the touch screen is super sensitive, and we want to make sure that we have the most common things that users are going to do be the things that they can do there. But the pitch correction tool, if you do need a double sharp or a double flat, you can either get it by accessing it through that page on the keypad, or you can use the pitch correction tool. The second thing I want to say about the pitch correction tool, and this is like totally important for, for our de design philosophy here, is if you make a mistake with the new touch input, how many steps should it take to finish it, no, to, to correct that? And so, what we were finding before we had this tool is that if you made a mistake, you would hit undo, and then you would do that gesture again and try to get that note right. And there are some things in Sibelius where having two operations is too much, and fixing a mistake is one of them. And that's why we wanted to give users the pitch correction tool so that with one touch, you sort of reactivate that last thing that you did, and it lets you sort of um, correct that note that you want with one touch. And I think that's going to be a huge time saver for our users. Especially yeah. as they learn the software. You yeah, know, I, 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 when I first started um, using this app, I kind of just, you know, gravitate towards that keypad and just to be able to, you know, get notes on the page as quickly as possible. And, you know, below that um, uh, pitch correction tool, we've obviously got this new button here, which is for adding chords. Is that right? Yeah, if that's I just right. Say, add a, you know, I'll just add a, say, a, you know, C note here and then. I can play a third above and then if you press and hold right you can then move that around to the actual note that you want to be so if you want to play a seventh or an octave you can kind of just add that just like that it's really easy i'm, I'm loving this bach uh, c major seventh there that's so cool i you know I yeah think kind of, be, he'd be careful with that dissonance but uh I but I i'm it. sure that people on the chat now that have been going what are you doing drew back off but hey i'm just kind of you know adding a little bit of fusion you know that's what i'm doing <laughs> awesome. So this chord tool, though, I mean, it brings up the point that like what we're so in desktop Sibelius, how do you get chords in? And there are keyboard shortcuts for that. So you sort of hit the number key, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it adds a generic note of that uh, interval above what you've just done, which is fine. But we don't have the keyboard, keyboard and we don't make the assumption that users are going to want to use a keyboard with their, with their, on the iPad. And so we've given them a completely new way to work in vertical sonorities. And so uh, rather than giving them sort of a discrete button to add a third and a discrete button to add a, you know, another interval, this is like an all-purpose all tool for adding any interval above or below your note, and you can just sort of, you know, repeatedly use it. So yes, the, I think the most common case is to add generic thirds above a note. That's why when you tap that chord tool button, that's what you get. But at the same time, it's like all the other note uh, input buttons. It's that same cool gesture. You press and hold, you slide up and down to set that note diatonically, left and right to set the chromatic inflection. And when it's where you want, you let go and, and, and you're off. So awesome. Another way of kind of, you know, uh, you know, adding notes on the page is using, you know, the Apple Pencil. And you guys have done some really, really cool design um, workflows with the Apple Pencil. Like, what was the whole idea behind that? Like, to, to kind of, you know, add the Apple Pencil support to the app? So the team set out with a super ambitious goal for the Apple Pencil. And this was the goal. The goal was that we would start... Uh, we would let users add any note anywhere on the score without touching a single button on the user interface because when you work with a pencil and a piece of paper in real life you don't have to go and find buttons to touch you know you just put the the tool down on the paper and you start working and that's what we wanted in the mobile app of sedalius too so so drew go ahead and close the keypad you know let's let's just sort of see that design in action 
Yeah. So uh, what you want to do is you want to put your pencil anywhere on the score and do a yeah. bit of a hard press. And when you do that, uh, Sibelius will go into note input mode. Then you've got your ghost note under the, the pencil tip. You can move it anywhere in your score, anywhere you want. And this is awesome if you want to work vertically across staves, say you're writing out some sonorities for like a SATB choir or something like that. So you can move anywhere you want. Like you could even slide that up over the top of the, uh, of the 16th notes you have running up there. And it, Sibelius would know what to do with this. But let's just go ahead and come down here. Maybe, maybe you don't want uh, a half note. And what you really wanted was a quarter note, but you don't want to have to go push a button for that. I mean, like in real life, you would just draw a quarter note. So what we've done is we've added these really intuitive tilt gestures. So just do a little bit of a hard press and then you can, yeah, exactly do a horizontal tilt on the, the stylus. And then here's the key thing here let go of the pressure don't let go of, don't take the tip off the screen but just let go of the pressure and you can again relaxingly sort of move that note anywhere you want now if you want to add a sharp or a flat then that's the same thing it's just a hard press and a tilt in the vertical direction up or down and again we find that that's super natural like if the note isn't what you want what do users sort of instinctively do they put a little bit more pressure on it do you ever do that like where you're mad at your computer and you sort of start typing the keys you know with more force Oh, every day. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's what sort of the idea behind this gesture is like, if you're just being real light and tapping in notes, it, it gives you what you would expect. But if you need something more from it, you need a different rhythm, you need a different chromatic inflection, you just do a little bit of a hard press and, and a tilt gesture, and uh, that will work for you. The cool thing about the hard press is that it calibrates itself. So the second you begin a hard press, that's the initial angle that Sibelius will use in order to determine like, the movement from there. So if you're left-handed and your your pencil tilt lives, you know, in your other hand, as soon as you do a hard press, that's that's sort of like ground zero, and then from there you can tilt. So it it self calibrates to you as you work with the software. Yeah, no, it's it's very very cool, and you know, there's a couple of different ways to obviously use the pencil too. Because obviously, when I started using this, and I didn't, I've never used Apple Pencil up until using to this app. So this was actually been a really fun experience for me. That you know, you can even use it as a stylus as well. So if you just kind of want to navigate around your score, you can obviously use the pencil like that. Um, it's almost like there's two modes to it in in that sense. Like you've got the mode of getting notes on the page, and then there's you know moving around, bringing all the drop down motions down everything I can do is I can do with the Apple pencil instead of, you know, kind of using my hand all the time. So it's, it's, was there that kind of hot, the whole idea with it, having those multiple modes, like the stylus mode and then the writing mode. Was that the idea there? That is a, that's a hot question, Drew. So uh, I'm, I'm going to jump into it and say that Sibelius is proud to be modeless. Uh, you can sort of do anything at any time. You don't have to sort of like say, Dear software, please only let me do engraving. Dear software, please let me just put in notes. So there, there are two modes underneath. So, I mean, the pencil does sort of function in note input mode or sort of edit mode as we call it. But here's the thing, like, how do you get into in note input mode? Well, I just showed you, so you can go ahead and do a hard press on the pencil, boom, you're in it. All right, now let go. Uh, let go. So you're still in note input mode. If you wanna get out of it, just do a tap with your finger, not with the pencil and you're out. So that's that's the, the extent of mode shifting that you're ever gonna have to do in this app. Literally do a hard press on the pencil, you can enter notes. If you don't wanna be able to enter notes, you wanna go back and edit something that you did, just tap with your finger. And that's like totally crucial for understanding the Apple Pencil uh, user experience. So anytime, say you make a mistake uh, with the Apple Pencil and you wanna fix something, your first in intuition should be to tap with your finger. And that will, again, take you into, into edit mode and then you can sort of uh, do whatever you need. So yeah. there's there's sort of like a secret chord mode built in here. And I want to just quickly uh, speak to that. So say you wanted okay. to build a, a chord on one of those quarter notes, uh, or even better yet, let's do one of the 16th notes. Okay. So, so go ahead and just select one of the 16th notes, any one, be real light with it. And go ahead and you can even show us like drag it, drag it up and down, you know, like in a continuous motion with the pencil drag up, down, up, down. Set it, set it where you want it. Now, when you're ready to enter a chord there, so go ahead and keep your pencil on it. Just go ahead and drag it up and down again, Drew. When you're ready to enter a chord, then do the hard press. And so oh, yeah. now you've got a ghost note and you can drag up. And now you're sort of ready to build the chord right on top of that. As soon as you let go, it will just add that note as a chord. And so what's happening under the hood here is Sibelius 
recognizes the selection you've made, it matches it, and then if you go into note input mode, it's ready to input a note with that selection's parameters. And so, uh, for example, now, if you tap out, you go into edit mode, do the same thing on the, uh, the eighth notes that are, that are coming next. So okay, so the eighth ahead. notes? Yeah, yeah, go ahead oh, and yeah. tap out your finger. Do a one finger tap to go into edit mode. I right, now select yeah, okay. the eighth note and go into chord mode and build some chords on top of those. Okay, cool. Let me try this out. So like, like you were saying before, I just tap that note and then I press and hold and then I can then add another note to that and then press and hold again. And as you can see, I'm just adding notes. Well, went a little too far. I hit the undo button. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So speaking about undo, uh, we've got three ways to undo. You've got the keypad undo. You've got the undo at the yep. top of the screen, which is blocked by multitasking right now, which is fine. You also yep. do a three finger swipe left in order to uh, undo that. So that's a cool built-in Apple gesture. And that will take yeah, that out. That. Yeah. Or you can do a three finger tap on the screen and that will bring up the, uh, the iOS uh, shortcuts bar and you can do an undo okay. there. So three finger single, single tap. Okay, cool. So if I just like say add a note here and then I'm not happy with that, I can just do a three finger tap. And then yeah, across the top here, I've got undo and I can get rid of that there. So yeah, very, very easy and intuitive. And what was the other one? We just do a three finger swipe was another option. Three finger so swipe, I... left to undo, right to redo. Yeah, those are the built-in iOS gestures. We're really happy to support them. I mean, copy and paste, undo, redo, those are staples of any, any software. Uh, and yet we, we didn't have the need to put them as sort of buttons on somewhere in the interface. It, it's built into the operating system. People who use their, their tablet for their regular workflows know these gestures, they expect them to be there. And uh, they're super cool. I mean, you can co copy and paste so fast in, the, in this new application. Yeah, well, that's a, probably a good one to try out because that's, you know, I'm a, I'm a lazy composer. I like to copy and paste all the time. So if I just did a selection here and then three finger tap there, I've got a copy and I can go there and three finger tap and paste. That's really fast, isn't it? Yeah, you can, you can actually do it faster, Drew. So go ahead and uh, oh, go let's, on. Let's, paste, let's paste that again. Okay, so, we're gonna, uh, well, what we've got to do first is we've got to do the uh, three finger swipe to get rid of that, which that, that's great. Love that. And cool. what's a faster way? All right, so go ahead and select that bar again. Okay, so I'll select that bar. Just one finger tap. And what you want to do is a scrunch gesture. So three fingers and you squeeze towards a central point. And, yeah, and three, three finger stretch. stretch. Scrunch, okay. And, yep, copy came up the top, the top there. Yep. Yep. Cool. And, then and now to paste bar. that, you can do a reverse scrunch. So three fingers and spread out and boom. Okay, so boom. select that bar and then three fingers and stretch out. Oh my days. That's, That's fantastic. It. Yeah, so that cut your workflow. So first you had to do a, a tap, another tap, and then sort of a selection, a tap, and another tap. And now you've done it in two gestures. So selection, uh, scrunch, selection, uh, reverse scrunch, and, and boom, you're done. So yeah, again, as the team was designing this app, we were totally counting the number of operations, the number of clicks it would take things. You know, if you've got to open a menu in order to access some feature, that's a click that counts against you. We just wanted it all to be in the score. We wanted it to be fast. Um, but at the same time, let me just riff on something real quick. Uh, speed, yeah. speed is not everything. Uh, I think I think a lot of the, the way people have used music notation software in the past, like speed is is good if you're copying something in. You know, you had that score up. You were doing some sort of transcription from one place to another. Speed is good in that case. But if you're a composer, speed is not always good. If you're thinking in the software, sometimes you want to work slow. And so I think some of these new workflows we've introduced, like the Apple Pencil, even if that takes you a little bit longer to do. Uh, I think it, it, it promotes a, a deeper level of thinking uh, that's going to bring, it's going to change the way that people think about music notation software and is, is more of a composition tool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I didn't know, mean to get too philosophical there, but I mean, it, it really is, uh, slow thinking is, is something that I've, I've really has struck me in, in designing this application that maybe we should be doing more for the people who enjoy that deep, slow thinking while they're working. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I think that's it's very cool. There's some, some fantastic gestures that have been built into this. Is uh, you know, I've only I've just learned a few today, which is just great. So you know, hopefully people will enjoy some of those. Um, maybe we should have a look at some of the chat and just see you know what people are asking here. So uh, you know, what are people thinking so far? So uh, one of the questions here is about I get well, obviously annotating with the pencil. There is no annotate at this stage, is there? But we're uh, 
kind of working on using that? Obviously, we're in review mode. So, so there, there are some technical challenges with annotation. I think there's a reason that you don't see it in, uh, in a lot of the options that are available for the iPad. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not coming. Um, the, the team has certainly overcome uh, far greater challenges. But let me just highlight something that is in the current build because it will at least get people going, I think. So, uh, Drew, can you go ahead and make a selection somewhere in your score? Yeah, sure. So I'll just do the old press outside of a bar and I can select that whole uh, yeah, bar. Like yeah, that. the lasso selection, super cool. Uh, you know what's cool about the lasso selection is you can also do it to create a non range selection. So, like, if you do that same lasso from the bottom up, uh, yep. You find that you might be able to capture, so go like in the white space between the two staves there. So yeah, like between the bass and the treble. Yeah. No, 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 I was like, you see oh, like between the bass and the treble, yep. yep. And you'll be able to, if you go slowly to just select some of those bottom notes, you'll see that it doesn't turn into a range selection right away. So you can just select yeah. like a multi-item selection. Yeah, uh, I can just select a couple of notes like that. And the cool thing is from there, you could take your pencil and you could sort of drag them all at, at once. Uh, so yeah, you, I can then you need just to, move like, them just around. Transposing type things, like it's, it's a really slick way to move, uh, you know, giant swaths of music. Yeah, you could probably move them to a different voice or something like that if that's what you were uh, working on potentially. Uh, yeah, so, sorry, Drew, you threw me off on another tangent because it's, it's so cool, all the things you can do in this application. But let's, let's go to the command search now and search for comment. Yeah. Uh, for a comment? Comment, that's it. Yeah, we've got comment and comment style. So let's take comment, not the text style. Cool. So this is this is uh, the extent of, of annotations that we have for right now. So if you're passing things, say, between a, a teacher and a student or vice versa, and you want to mark things up and say, or maybe you're just you know, a composer and an orchestrator, and you want to say, this isn't quite what I thought, or we need to, we need to modify this, is A plus awesome. Yeah, right on. That's <laughs> Uh, so you can go ahead and add those comments and those will translate back to desktop Sibelius perfectly. So if you've got a student who's only got um, the mobile version of the application, they can make comments, they can send it to somebody who's using desktop Sibelius and, and those comments will appear in the score. Yep, perfect. All right, that's a, that's a great one as well. Uh, what else have we got going on in the chat here? Um, Drew, there was a tough one. There's a tough one. I noticed it was coming up on social, and, and I want to go for it. And uh, Sam Butler might jump in and tell me if, if I'm doing something terribly wrong here. But let's let's go for a. You can either delete uh, everything that's in the score. Let's do that. Let's let's go for it. Yeah, let's just kind of you know, triple tap all of that and just get rid of it like that. Or a two finger oh. triple tap. Yeah, no, actually, this is good. What you did was better. At what I was going to tell you with. Cause some problems. Cool. Yeah. All right. So one of the things that's come up in, in uh, the forums is how do I add a pickup uh, bar into Sibelius, uh, into, into mm -hmm. this application? So in our desktop application, what you're going to do is you're going to use probably the, uh, the uh, score builder. So you go to the quick start, you select a template, and it gives you the option to add a, a pickup beat. So for right now, I mean, we're going to address this workflow within the mobile app, but there is, there is a workaround that you can use for right now uh, that should work. So let's say that we wanted a one beat uh, pickup into, into bar one. So we, we need something on, on bar four there. So I think if you're, if you're working with the pencil, it's pretty easy. You just go ahead and you put a quarter note on beat four. So why don't we do it with the pencil first? Yep. So you can do a hard press and then put that all the way over on beat four and let go. Yep. Cool. There we go. All right. So now we're on beat four, but what we have to do is we've got to clean things up. So go ahead and uh, let's delete the quarter rest and the half rest as well. So you can select okay, so them. Go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just delete that and select yep. that and, and delete that. That's right. And let's Great. also, um, so now. I'm trying to think of let's let's also have something matching in the, the bass clef as well so select the uh the whole rest down there and yep oh let me uh, just move oh. that guy around yeah so that's cool i was actually gonna yeah that works that's cool we can do okay. that too so let's delete the uh the half rest and the, the thing that's on beat three as well so we'll delete those okay we're going to delete the half rest and we'll select that chord note and delete that as well oh and delete okay, and i think the... you have to delete it twice yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, now, going. now what I want you to do is uh, select that. Um, let's just select everything. So, like a two finger triple tap should be fine since we don't have anything else in the score. So, okay. So triple tap. Select all the music. Yeah. Awesome. And now let's go to the command search and go to uh, the, the command there for um, respacing. 
Uh, okay, so I'm just going to go up to the command search at the top there. Oh, and get, sorry, uh, respacing is what I was going to add. A oh, reset, reset node spacing. So type reset. Reset. Okay, I've got a couple of different here ones here. Reset design, reset note spacing is the second yeah, option. That. Here. Tap that. Cool. All right. And uh, one more time. One more time on that. Didn't work. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, do it wasn't doing what I was thinking it was going to do. I'm going to, Sam, if, if you want to jump in and tell me what I'm doing wrong here, I know there's a way to, to jump in and make that. Uh, uh, yeah, a few, um, those hidden notes that you've, or hidden rest that you've got. Uh, so select the bar again, Drew, and then you know, uh, select the first bar. And then select, you'll be able to tap on those hidden rests and then delete those properly. Ah, I don't know, clearly deleted. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. So they're, they're hidden at the moment, so they still take up space. So now uh, yeah. uh, try resetting the note spacing. And okay, should, reset note please. spacing there. There we go. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Sam. Awesome. There we go. Right, I'll disappear again. I just, I just want to read it. Uh, well, share with the world that uh, nobody knows Sibelius better than Sam Butler. And uh, it's so awesome to have his like endless knowledge of the software, especially on this webinar. So Sam, thanks for saving us there. Cool. So Drew, uh, I think you're, uh, I think we've done it now, right? We've added a pickup bar to uh, Sibelius, at least a workaround for now for if you need pickup bar somewhere in your measure here's, uh, or somewhere in your score, here's what you can do for the time being. Yeah, we have. That's great. Yeah, no, that was fairly simple too. So hopefully people in, uh, people on the chat will appreciate that one. Uh, how are we going on the chat here? Uh, I guess, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of questions that have been answered by all the great staff. Maybe we should kind of get into the, the different tiers that are available for the app. So obviously we've mentioned that you can download this for free um, and you get Sibelius first. And what comes with Sibelius first? Yeah, so uh, I think the easiest way to, to say what's there is, is, I mean, to actually sign out of your account room. We can, we can take a peek. Yeah. Uh, we've taken a different approach here from our desktop app. So when you open Sibelius first on a desktop computer, you don't see what you're not getting. So the interface looks very minimal and very clean. Um, but at the same time, you don't know what you have access to and what you don't have access to. We've totally changed that up for the mobile version. So for example, you've got the keypad open. Why don't you go to the second palette in the keypad? So that's that, uh, that's the rest button. Yeah. You can yeah. see now that you've got some icons that are at half opacity. And so those are indicating that those are tier restricted features. You can go ahead and click on one of them, Drew. And yeah, so if I actually message. tap that, yeah, it brings up that tier limitation uh, option there, and then I can unlock new features or continue with it without upgrading. So that's right. And this was what I was talking about earlier with discovering where the sign in is. Like the app will naturally just lead you to sign in if you need to. But you know, for a lot of our users, we think that the free version is going to be totally sufficient. I mean, it certainly lets you try out all of our workflows, but uh, there, there's a lot there in, in the Sibelius first. The big limitation is that you can use uh, up to four staves. So if you're doing something that's greater than a string quartet, um, then, then you'll need uh, one of the higher, higher paid tiers. Yeah, so, uh, that's right. Thing, so yeah, go ahead, Drew. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, the next tier obviously is um, Sibelius, which is the, you know, adds about 16 staves. Is that correct? A lot, a lot yes. like the desktop app. Yeah. Correct. Exactly the same. Yeah. And then now, um, yeah, the final one obviously is Sibelius Ultimate. And, you know, a good thing um, for people that are existing Sibelius or Sibelius Ultimate um, desktop um, users that have an a subs active subscription or a support plan, they can just log into their account and uh, up comes the login window, the login, their avid credentials, and all of those features just automatically get added to the app. That simple, right? That's right. Yep. One click, it will tell you you successfully signed in and then it will run. And uh, yeah, so uh, Joe Pearson has done our design for the, the back end of uh, the new login system. It's, uh, it's beautiful work that he's done and we can't wait to, uh, to try to bring some of his improvements uh, to other, other products. So um, yeah, cheers to Joe for his really good work. Yeah, excellent. And so another place where you'll, you'll see tier limitations is if you try to um, add some things from the gallery. So up in the create menu, and Drew, I think it might just be my screen, but it looks like your iPad's a little high in the frame. If you could drag it down just a touch. Bring it down. Okay, how's that? 
that looks good for me. I'm not sure what everyone else is seeing, but this is perfect. So um, yep. you go to something like the the lines uh, menu. Yeah, so, lines so menu here. Yeah, you can you can again and, see that some of these things are at sort of half opacity, and so if you need those things, um, you know, it will ask you to sign in. But if if you don't need those things, again, the the app is fully functional, so you can you can try everything this, uh, everything else. Cool. Quite a bit there in the like I've just logged out, so I'm just using Sibelius first at the moment. There's still quite a lot of functionality there. Like, you know, obviously if you just want to add, you know, hairpins like crescendos and diminuendos or trills and slurs, like that's there's there's a lot of stuff there. It's not that great. It's it's great that for a free user they've got so much stuff there. Yeah, and something that's really cool is again, I think users can see what's not covered now. Whereas before that was invisible and they might sort of get lost thinking, you know, how do I do X, Y, Z in Sibelius? And they just don't know because it's not there in the interface. Whereas our new approach to, is, is to sort of let everybody see the exact same thing and you, you know, use this sort of opacity in order to indicate whether you've got access to editing it or not. Yeah, I know all these instruments here. I know there was one thing that we wanted to, uh, to look at was obviously changing instruments or adding new instruments to uh, to a score, wasn't there? Yeah, um, you where wanna, wanna, you hop back to the Saint Saens score that we were looking at at the beginning. There was yeah, there's another thing I wanted to do there too, but maybe we can change an instrument in that score, and then uh, I want to I want to show one other cool thing that I think is awesome about this application. Yeah, absolutely. So I've obviously got my violin at the top here, so I'm just going to triple tap that violin, which is going to select the whole, you know, the whole instrument there, and I can hit the plus button up the top here. And the very, very last little uh, gallery button is our instrument. So I can go in here. I could even say search for, I know this is probably not the right instrument, but let's just do a guitar just for fun. We've got electric guitar and we've got the option to add to new score or actually add oh. change. I can't so do, oh, gonna, that was. It's a, it's a tier restricted. So go ahead and tap it. Go ahead and tap it. You can see what happens. Yep. Yeah. And it lets you know that, um, hey, if you want to add an instrument change, you'll have to be on either Sibelius or Sibelius Ultimate. Yes, so I'll have to add in add in my credentials to go into that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, let, me, yeah okay. let me show let me show you something else though. I think we can demo this uh, something else important here without you signing in. So something that might okay. benefit all of our first and free users. So let's go ahead and uh, select the third bar, just one of the instruments. Yep, let's select this bar here. Okay, and then can you go up to the create menu? And let's yep. see what would I'm be a good thing to time. demo this with. Uh, maybe the first, the first uh, sub gallery there. So the notations pane, very, very first one. Yes, yep. right here. Cool. Let's go ahead and change that to a to a bass clef for a second. Yep. So so I'm tapping that one there. I mean, there I don't go. know how many violin players enjoy reading in bass clef, but but the thing <laughs> that I want to mention here is that you made a one bar selection and then you changed a clef. And that cleft change applied to the entire score. This is different than desktop Sibelius default. So Drew, can you undo that for a second? Sure. Undo that change. Now what I want you to do is select two bars. So maybe double tap um, your existing selection. So that selects the, uh, the system here. Yep, I've only selected now, these two bars that, and nothing yeah, else add is selected. Cleft in one more time. So let's turn that back into a base cleft. Yep, just go up to the top here, and we're just going to add that bass clef like so. And now, we can see now, yeah, the treble clef has been added back at the end of this bar here. That's right. So the thing that I wanted to mention is that one bar selections are special in the, the mobile application. This is a shortcut so that, I mean, normally within desktop surveillance, if you make a range selection, uh, it puts in a cancellation of your change at the end of the selection. So something like our clefs, if you put in a base clef, it will go back to whatever the old clef was. But since, you know, we're not clicking and we're not doing the same sort of workflows to make selections in the mobile app, we wanted to come up with a fast way for people to put in a change from where they were to the end of the piece without having to select everything. And so that's what the one bar selection does for us. So I, I just wanted to demo exactly what you just showed. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. That was a really, really easy way of, uh, you know, just doing a, a change to an instrument. Cool. And here's an, another change that I think is really important, and it highlights what's so beautiful about this application. So what would you want, how, how would you go about changing the tempo of playback here? So say you were learning this piece and, and the, the set tempo that it's at, that is, is just way too fast for you. So yep. you know, People, I think, look for some sort of control. They say, where's like the, the transport window where I can slide the tempo slider and make playback happen in a different place? And 
that's that's not what we've done here. So, Drew, do you know how to change the tempo? Uh, you tell me. This this is going to be uh, this is going to be great. I'd love to because there's so many songs that I want to learn on piano that uh, you know are really really fast. I'd love to know how to slow them down. Cool. So again, the the design here is the score is the user the user interface. So if you want to change the tempo, you do exactly what you would do when you were putting on a score. So all you need to do, Drew, is is double tap the uh, the looks like a dotted quarter equals eighty, or is it a quarter? Yeah, dotted yep. quarter equals eighty. Double tap that ahead, one. Yep. You can go ahead and just sort of backspace and change that to something like forty. Yep, forty. Great, awesome. and then just return. Yeah, uh, tap in the score. And Do there we go. The and now hit playback, and you'll find that it, Sibelius just does whatever is on the score. I mean, the score is the boss. That simple. That's great. And then if I undo that just by hitting the undo button here at the top left, and we'll try that again. That's really, really simple, isn't it? All it is. So, you know, put it on the score. Sibelius knows what to do from there. And so if you need it slower, just change your tempo. It's exactly what you would do if you wanted the music to be played back differently by, by real musicians. So it's, it's a really cool model. I think, you know, the, the software becomes sort of like an invisible layer between you and your musical ideas. And uh, the idea is just put it in the score and Sibelius will take care of uh, the playback from there. That's so very cool. Well, this is, yeah, this has been great, even for me, just to kind of learn a couple of more little tricks, you know, for my, you know, palette while I'm kind of learning to play music or I'm trying to compose. One thing we didn't uh, mention that's another sort of, it's a bit hidden until you read the documentation, is that you can move the keypad to the other side of the screen. And this is really important if you're a left-handed user. Uh, so you can, yes. uh, Drew, you want to go ahead and demo that workflow? Yeah, I can. Yeah. So yeah, I have it on the right hand side, but you're right. If I, uh, I noticed that if I close the keypad here, I obviously get that little quarter note in the um, bottom right. If I press and hold that, it actually then moves the keypad over to the left hand side and I can be working over here. And that might be great for people that can multitask and be using the pencil as well as using their left hand for the keypad and just close it like that. And then that little uh, quarter note will just stay, um, Eighth note, sorry, a quaver, I say, in Australia, uh, it's going to be in that bottom left there. So, yeah, really fast way, depending on your workload. So press and hold, and that moves that back over to the, uh, the right-hand side, which is where I have it. Obviously, yeah, there is that interoperability um, between, obviously, desktop and, and iPad app. We've obviously kind of gone through that. People can start on the iPad app and move over to the desktop or vice versa. If you've got, obviously, one of the newer versions of uh, Sibelius or Sibelius Ultimate, that's, that's no problem at all. Yeah, I think we do recommend if you've got older versions of Sibelius, like 8, you know, 7 or 8, that just save a copy of it before you bring it over to to the, the the ipad app just the way the code's designed is that right joe yeah exactly right so uh the mobile app will open a sibelius file any sibelius file just like desktop sibelius file will open it the the reason that we suggest that users make a copy of it is because once that file becomes saved in the mobile app it saves in our newest file version which they may not have access to open in their desktop version depending on what desktop version of sibelius they're using so to be totally safe uh, just make a copy and that way you'll know that you'll have one version that you can open on your desktop and you can have another version that you can open on uh, on the mobile fantastic so that so kind that of gets, gets to the end of our presentation. There's a bit of an echo going on, sorry. Um, gets to the end of our presentation. There's so many Q and A's that have come through. So thank you to everyone that's uh, uh, been asking all those questions. Hopefully we got to all of them. Um, I can uh, see lots of people are asking questions about chord symbols and it really, really will depend on the uh, version of uh, tier that you, you have with the app. Um, yes, you can add in the free version, you can obviously add a chord symbol. If you're doing something like a basic lead sheet um, and you just, you know, you just want to add some chords above a melody, yes, that's totally possible in the free version. But I think everyone really should download the app, see what's available in the free version. There's so much stuff there. Um, and if you are an existing Sibelius or Sibelius Ultimate user, uh, enter in your um, uh, My Avid credentials and you'll be able to see um, what uh, functionality is brought down based on what subscription or support plan that you currently have. Um, I'm just having a look at any other 
um, questions that we have here. Uh, can I share, uh, can you share so colleagues can work on your score. Yes, absolutely. You can just basically add, um, airdrop to your, um, if you're on an iPad, you can just airdrop to a desktop or you could use OneDrive or you know any of those uh, cloud services to um, share a Sibelius score with uh, other users. That's completely fine. It just will open up on desktop or the iPad app. It's just a .sib file. Um, uh, when inputting tempo into a new score, how do I add uh, tempo into a music note? So dep when you add a tempo, exactly like the desktop app, you know, if you add uh, the tempo to the top of the score, it will then match that tempo. Um, so yeah, we'll see if there's anything else. Uh, Adding chords, yeah, we've kind of got, everyone's asking about chord symbols. Yes, you can You can d definitely add chords if you're doing something like a lead sheet. Um, uh, we have someone that has Sibelius 8. Um, okay, so yes, if you don't have a current version of uh, Sibelius, so if you're not on an active subscription or a, um, a current support plan, no, th those features probably won't open up. So you may need to cross grade to a subscription there. Um, I knew that I was going to get a delivery at this point in time. That's um, one second. Sorry about that, everyone. I just when you work from home and you have to get deliveries and things, that's always the way. So sorry about that. Um, so I think, yeah, lots of people are asking questions about scores. Um, lots of people are asking, um, you know, about, you know, sharing scores with others. So yes, I think definitely go down, uh, download the, um, the app. If you have a current subscription or an active support plan, you'll be able to unlock all of those features. Um, uh, and yeah really enjoy the app. So I think we've kind of reached the top of the hour. So I think that's the, um, you know, end of our presentation. Thank you so much for everyone that joined. Sorry about the delivery that just came in. Um, uh, so yes, uh, if you uh, need any more information about um, Sibelius for iPad, you can go to the, uh, so there we go. The uh, find out more at avid.com forward slash Sibelius for mobile. And uh, you can find out more information there. If you do have a, an iPad at the moment, please go to the App Store, download the app. It's a free download. Um, and then you can just start using it straight away. So thank you so much for everyone. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are in the world, and uh, stay safe.